Be afraid of us, for we are the knock on your door when you're home alone. We are the noise you hear in the middle of the night. We are the ones standing at the foot of your bed, watching you sleep. Be afraid, for we are all these things, and we are positively fiendish. You're free. You are free. They can't hurt you anymore. No more fish on Fridays. No more rulers across the knuckles. No more hours spent confessing masturbatory thoughts about Candace Putter's tight sweater to a man in black breathing heavily on the other side of a screen. No more hours spent on your knees, eyes squeezed shut, hands clasped so tightly the skin turns white while you mutter words and phrases that have long since lost their meaning to you. No more. 22. Out of college and finally on my own. Finally. I left at dawn, a kiss on my cheek from my mother and a brief but firm handshake from my father, who was grumbling because he had to get up at such an early hour to see me off. When he extended his hand, I winced, automatically expecting a blow to the head or a slap to the face. But nothing. After we shook, I dropped his hand like a red-hot horseshoe that had just been dipped in bull squat. Did I just say bull squat? Wow. Make them remember you, my mother said, but I don't think she was sincere. My father just licked the front of his teeth, clicking his tongue at me before wrapping an arm around my mother's shoulders and guiding her into the house. Neither one turned to look back at me. Lot's wife's in the room. I've been on the road for over two days now, and I keep thinking about them. Two days. Virginia to California is quite a way, and I wanted to take my time, see the sights, enjoy the scenery. But all I've done is check out Rowdy Raymond's Gator Farm, where I just ate a burrito and sat in the parking lot and cried for 20 minutes. No! Stop feeling bad. Stop the bull squat. This is my new life, and I'm free! Why don't I feel like it? The broken yellow line in the center of the road seduces me with cruel intentions. You think you're free? whispers, follow me, follow me forever and you'll end up right back at the beginning, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. My rosary and St. Christopher medal swing back and forth from my rearview mirror like a wagging finger of Sister Berta. If God loves me, why would he create hell, I ask her. That's a foolish question, she replies. But what is the answer? Whack! That is your answer, she says, smacking my hands with the ruler. You belong to God. Do not question. She shakes her head and says, Poor Thomas. You will never amount to anything. Oh, wait. What? Headlights blast into my eyes. With one arm, I, I shield from the glare, and it, with the other, I, I spin the steering wheel as hard as I can, trying to pull my car back into the lane and onto the shoulder of the road. Thick clouds of dust glowing hellishly red in the dark from the taillights. I could have died. I seriously could have died out here in the middle of the desert, and no one would know. No one. Hello? Hello there. An old man wearing the night sky for a cape stands by my car tapping on the window. I saw the whole thing, he says. Got his plate number two. You need a tow into town? I turn the key, but the car simply sputters and refuses to fire up. A nod of my head and the old man hobbles off into the darkness ahead of me. A few seconds later, the lights of a medium-sized tow truck appear, backing up to my front bumper. 
The old man slides out of the cab, bright orange neon ropes in one hand and stuffing a white handkerchief into his shirt pocket. Open your trunk, he says. I pull the lever and with a pop, the trunk lid raises. My car door swings open and the old man ushers me out. Why do you need to get into the trunk, I ask him. And he grins and says to take out anything valuable. Just to keep me honest. This is bull squat. The only thing in my trunk is my suitcase. I reach in, take it out, and suddenly I feel the soft cotton cloth of the old man's hanky wrap around my nose and mouth. My hands try to pull his arm down, but his grip is surprisingly strong. I feel a hardness below his belt pressing into my hip. He's enjoying this. Don't fight it, boy. It pours into my ear. You can't do anything about it, so just let me go. My shouts are muffled. There's the strong odor of mint and cough drops and hospital corridors and vapor rub. I'm back in high school, sitting on a wrestling mat in the middle of the gym, bleachers full of spectators. Candace Putter is before me, head back and sighing softly as my hands roam freely over her sweater. It is soft but firm like a kitten's belly, and I am happier than I was on my best birthday. She places her small, smooth hands on mine, then guides them down, sliding them underneath the hem of the sweater. Her skin is silky and warm. Oh, so warm. My fingers tremble as they inch upwards, touching the lacy material of her bra. Her eyes lock with mine, and she smiles. You're free, she whispers. Free. Suddenly, everyone runs down from the bleachers. Their hands are all over my body, grabbing me, lifting me, hoisting my body into the air and turning me upside down. They hold me against a wooden beam and Sister Berta oozes through the crowd like mercury, a hammer and nails in her hands. Whosoever saves their life for me shall lose it, she rasps. The tip of the nail presses sharply into my wrist and with a loud crack, the hammer drives it through my arm and into the wooden beam. You are not free, she says. You will never be free. I open my eyes and the world is upside down. Pews full of people standing on their heads, faces smiling from deep within black hoods. I cough and blood runs down my throat and the sides of my face. Looking up, down, a huge silver bucket rests beneath my head. My feet point skyward and my arms are outstretched and it all becomes clear. I have been nailed to an inverted cross, pinned like a butterfly, like a bug. The tow truck driver stands before them. The pounding in my ears blocks out most of what he says, but as he rants and raves and gestures to me with a long dagger in one hand, I catch the words praise and evil, and one that sends chills to the bone, sacrifice. The congregation rocks back and forth like Jews at the wailing wall, like my father and his lazy boy nodding, smiling, panting. A strong hacking cough spits up more blood and the giant cross teeters a bit. My tongue dances across my mouth, suddenly excited, barely noticing that all of my teeth have been pulled. Whoever built this cross may take pride in their blasphemy, but not in their work. The structure is not sound. It is, in fact, bullshit. Bullshit. That was easy. I look at the truck driver whipping the crowd into a frenzy and slowly begin rocking the inverted cross back and forth. He is robbing me of my life, my new life. So I'm gonna return the favor tit for tat, an eye for an eye. The heavy cross pivots wildly and dangerously. Before I feel the fulcrum break and my feet nailed high above me swing forward, the congregation scatters, screaming, and the father tow trucker looked back at me too late. Too late. Make them remember you. My mother's voice echoes my head. The heavy wooden beam crushes my captor's head, splitting it like a melon. The cross lands hard and my neck snaps from the impact. Sound and light, pain, fear, fade to black. 
to nothing. To forever. Free. I. <laughs>